Hello, everybody. Welcome to Hanging Out with Howie. Tonight, we're going to talk about that difficult guests we occasionally run into at events. Um, they could be a danger to themselves, to others, to us as DJs and our gear. So these will be techniques for dealing with them and our opinions are in our opinions only. So when I put this out there, Eric jumped. He says, man, I got a lot of them. So <laughs> go for it, Eric. What do you got? All right. So back years ago, and I'm going to guess five or six years ago, I bought the facade, which a lot of people use now. But for me, it wasn't mm -hmm. just for the look of things. It was right. more protection of my gear. And it's one specific event that I can think of where this bridesmaid kept coming up and she kept, you know, she was holding her drink over my, my stuff. And I said, mm -hmm. look at lady. I said, if you spill that the events over night is over. Now I like to kind of display my stuff. I've got nice gear. I like people to see it, but now that facade is, is like my goalie keeps people back, keeps them out of the way. And more mm -hmm. importantly, their drinks, it's far enough away. Their drinks, even if they hold it at arm's length, cannot hold it over my laptop, my controller. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, that's something that I've implemented to try to, you know, just to keep that barrier, that little bit of that space to protect my gear because of those spills. A couple of times I've had spills and you know what? I'd rather have wine spilled on my facade and ruin the whole, you know, the, the fabric on it than have that mm -hmm. wine spilled on my, you know, my $2,000 laptop. I hear you there. So, yeah. All right. We, and you know, we can go in any direction you want, whether they're unruly or just holding drinks. Um, but um, we're, we'll go to Jay now because we typically leave him for last. So um, I'm, I've, I've encountered everything over my career. Um, mm. I've had the unruly that I've had to go up to a client and say, I'm going to be honest with you. Th this guy is getting a little threatening with me. Oh, he's totally fine. I said, you guys signed a contract. And one of the clauses in the contract is if the DJ is made to feel threatened or if mm -hmm. the gear is put at jeopardy due to intentional or unintentional actions of client or guest, the DJ reserves the right to end the event at any time. I said, I've never had to invoke that clause. I said, but if this guy comes up one more time in a kind of threatening manner, it's either going to go to punches or I'm going to end your event. So I'll give you, I'll, I'll just tell you, mm -hmm. getting rid of him is probably easier than getting rid of me. So that's when it got really extreme. I had one mm -hmm. instant where a guy went up when I was talking to the bride and groom and changed a song by hitting play on the other deck. He and I got into words and it, you know, I was very respectful, but, you know, I made it very well known. And he kind of gave me the, hey, calm down, you're just a DJ thing. And I was younger, and I will admit, I said to him in no uncertain terms, this event ends at four o'clock, and I would really love it if you would have this discussion with me after the event outside. And I was not happy. But I think being tactful and diffusing is the best way to go. And when I was with San Diego PD's crisis team, I learned this. When mm -hmm. I was the general manager of a nightclub in San Diego, I certainly learned this. You can talk almost anyone. I was able to talk a president of a local motorcycle club who's now doing a life sentence for murder out of a club without swinging, touching, or anything. I think you really need to mm -hmm. make it very well known. But you also need to be very alert. I see a lot of video of DJs who are so in the zone, in the mix, that they don't know there's somebody leaning up against their table. Mm -hmm. You know? And sadly, I did a wedding two weeks ago. I had a gentleman who was probably 90 who grabbed the connecting piece of my Evolve 50s and grabbed it as in to hold on to. And I reached over to his arm with both hands and I said, sir, I'm terribly sorry. This will not hold enough weight for you to lean on it. Can I help you across the floor? What what can I do mm -hmm. to get you in a, out of the situation where you feel the need mm -hmm. to grab this? He goes, I'm just old and I'm not steady. I'm like, I will walk you to your table, whatever's needed. But it's the downside of the job. And I agree with Eric. I've got to get an, a facade for 2022. Mm -hmm. And I want it that it shows what I'm doing. But I want it to elicit that people don't go over your gear. I mean, Brian's got the greater vent table. The problem with that and a facade and everything else is they at some point can go 
hey, can you play my, and the drinks doing this routine, you know, and you would see. I haven't had that understand. issue. I, I, I just let you know, I ever people, people tend not to come forward to it because it's 24 inches deep. It's too far of a throw for them. They'll come beside it before they try to go over. Okay. It. That's, mm -hmm. that's a great thing to hear. So maybe that yeah. sort of design is something that would work. Yeah. It's I mean, design, and that's just my experience, but yeah, they typically you, people don't lean over the front of it. They'll come around it. Yeah. And Erica probably tell you the yeah. same thing with the facade. Mm -hmm. You, you need yeah. to realize something you are performing at the event to help a client have an amazing time. If some of their guests, and it, it often happens that it's a family member too, have had too much alcohol to understand reality. Well, you, you have to walk that tightrope, but you do have to let the client know that at least with me, my contract has a very clear clause that says if the DJ is made to feel threatened or if the gear is at jeopardy through intentional or unintentional actions of the client or their guests, the DJ reserves the right to end the event. Howie, why'd okay. you let him go second? Good. What Good was night, it? everybody. Yep. Good night. Um, I thought <laughs> I thought this was a Tuesday night music show for a minute. I know. Oh. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go to Aerosmith. What happened? We're gonna go to John John C from Boston. For How sure. do you handle up in Boston? Hey, hey, you say hey. What are you doing leaning over that? Um, <laughs> when the facade first went up, what you doing there? Um, it was it was close to the table, but now with with some changes we've made in the design, um, the facade's actually backlit, so that pushes it probably another twenty four inches forward. So mm -hmm. like uh, like uh, BSR started to say, it's, like, it's it's too far for someone to even yell something at you because you can't hear them. Uh, mm -hmm. So they're forced to come around on either side. So yeah, um, you know, yeah. It's, you know, beforehand when the facade was just there, you get the wine glass and then leaning over the top. Now there's there's lights <laughs> and it's just like they think they see you, but you're still you know a good six feet away from where they can actually irish whisper something to you mm -hmm. um so a lot of times they they come around to the sides i'd rather someone come up on me from behind than just lean in over the side with a you know a big wide open top glass you know it's about protecting the gear um and and those people like you don't want them to fall or to hurt themselves mm -hmm. um yeah we have the stanchion posts with like those the, the bank uh, ribbons that you can stretch out and clip so usually i put about a three foot line on either side of me if i'm playing in a in a, mm -hmm. a pub or a bar or something like that. So they, they just can't come at me and, and just blindside me when I'm looking down. They're not just suddenly in my face. Usually they're coming up from behind me and I get time to, to hold them back and, and keep them because, you know, problem guests don't just, just magically all of a sudden show up as a problem. They, they kind of work that meter. They start off, they're a little talkative. Then they, they get a little braver when they've talked to you a few times. Then you're the best buddy. They want to come up and put their arm around you and, you know, tell you a few more things. So you just try to keep it in check and not be surprised. Pay attention. You know, keep your eyes open. Like Jay said. Thank be you, away. John. Sure hey, thing. we're going to go to uh, my buddy, Bill from uh, Maryland, who oh. also happens to be a paralegal at Dewey Cheatham and Howe and a soothsayer of all things uh, legal uh, music wise and so forth. So you've got a great haircut got? this week. Yeah. Looking good. I'm digging the haircut looking nice mm. and looks sharp looks sharp mm. looks great so i i'm gonna borrow the words of one of the greatest coolers in the bar industry dalton who said <laughs> you have to know when to be nice when somebody yeah. comes up and makes a request be nice when somebody comes up and calls you a jerk for not playing their song be nice mm -hmm. and at some point you'll know when not to be nice and that's because dalton will tell you so you have to have your inner Dalton. And because, well, of course, unfortunately, Dalton passed away. Um, but you have to have that inner Dalton to know. And in my opinion, it, it's just kind of one of those things. Everybody's already brought up the facade. I got a facade last year because of COVID. I'm going to keep using it because I figured out that it does provide that kind of shield. It, it, gives, mm -hmm. it gives you distance. And in the weddings that I've done with it and in other events, just as how he said, or, or Brian said, they come around the side and mm -hmm. I'm okay with people coming around on the side. I'm even okay with people walking through my, you know, behind me or between me, if they need to get from one side of the room to the other without passing on the dance floor, as long as they're nice. <laughs> Once mm -hmm. they're not, they're not, that, that's it. They're done. 
Um, my biggest ever situation that occurred at an event, um, it, it occurred on a boat. And someone went up to that guest and, and said, you know, there's kind of a, a lengthy swim here. And I don't know if you ever heard this or not, but Chesapeake Bay is full of sharks. Not really, but, you know, hey, they shut up and they started acting nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that was my inner Dalton that said that to that person. But they weren't from there, really? so they didn't know any better. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Bill. And last but not least, my wingman and co-creator with crazy off the wall ideas, Brian is red. I think everybody's given some great ideas tonight and I, I couldn't agree with all of you more. In fact, as I'm kind of thinking of what to say one by one, you're ticking them off, you know, I know I was, <laughs> was going to make this big roadhouse thing, you know, and, you know no, Bill got it. <laughs> it's funny though because yeah what i do on a microphone when i'm and jay we've talked about this it, it's uh very casual and i it, i, I kind of sound like you know i don't know like i'm talking now right but but if you don't know me you can't read me but when someone approaches me I turn that nice meter up to like 11 and I'm really friendly to people. I've been doing this this summer. Hi, how are you? The book almost taken back because they didn't expect me to be that way because of my microphone presence. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, hi. Hey, what can I do for you? Oh, sure. Yeah, I'll take care of that for you. Thanks for coming up. And, just, and they're just like, it's almost I like say that part. It, it, it comes on. It, it falls into the category of uh, under promise and over deliver. Cause yeah, they're hearing me on the microphone, you know, speaking one way, but then when they actually approach me, I'm like the nicest person they've ever met. It's worked well. It's diffused things that I know maybe might have gotten out of hand later on in the evening. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it like like Bill said, you know, you know when to be nice until you're not nice anymore. And going to what Jay had said about somebody touching his gear, I had a situation. That I didn't even tell you guys about but one of my first gigs this year where I went to the bathroom and I came back and these people who I'd been very kind to and have been playing a lot of their music from, from their, they, uh, well, they belonged to, uh, an ethnic group. They were Indian and they wanted a lot of Bollywood and things. I was hooking them up. I was being very kind to them, went to the bathroom, came back. They were behind my booth on my computer looking up songs and i went nuts mm. and they didn't know what to do they were just so taken back by it and i think they were so taken back by it because i was so nice to them before so it meant more to them that i was not so nice in contrast and I meant what I said, and they didn't get another song the rest of the night because I wasn't going to listen to them. Uh, but yeah, I like that. Be nice until it's time to not be nice anymore. And that, that's right. all you can really do. There's no magic way to tell anybody how to handle stuff. Every situation is different. Helps mm -hmm. you guys with street smarts. You know, you mm -hmm. kind of know what's going on. Mm -hmm. You, you kind of understand people. Some are going to be able to handle it. Some are going to struggle with it, but just do your best out there. That's all you can do. Just try be, to be safe. Be respectful. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing how far it goes. It, you know, most of the time, that is the key. Just yeah. just be cool. You're, mm -hmm. you're extra cool to them, and they're, they're going to be cool to you. Even if they're out of hand, they're going to be cool to you. But disarm them. I, yeah. I get a yeah. lot in my market. I get a lot of military, and I've had weddings where I'll get guys that are like wasted. And, you know, the first couple requests are nice. And then by the third and fourth, it's like, dude, you got to hook this up. And I'll just out of nowhere be like, mm -hmm. dude, are you military? Yeah. Hey, man, thank you for your service. And all of a sudden, the whole game changes because they realize like, well, wait, wait, no, yeah. I'm supposed to be mad at him because he didn't play some stupid song. And I'm like, you know what? Let me plan to get that in a little later on. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. man. Thank, thanks again, man. I appreciate right. it. Just be relatable. 
Or, yeah, that's that's yeah. all. Yeah. They they think we're like a we're not people and we're not on a job. They think we're just there because we like to party and right. You know, they don't always understand we're professionals. And I think when you can be that, they get it a little better. Well, sorry to interject. I've only, I've only had to invoke this a few times, uh, as far as um, you know, shutting off the music. I mean, when it gets you know, dangerous where either, a, you know, some sort of a altercation breaks out or I feel threatened, I immediately go to this. The very first program I have in, in my lighting house thing, lights, <laughs> everything goes white yeah, and yeah. the music stops and I have the microphone and uh, and I and I just warned them that, hey, you know, if this doesn't stop now, the event's over. You know, it's in the contract. I feel threatened. And it's over. I only had to do it two times in my whole life, um, in my whole career, rather. But, um, yeah, everybody else uh, came up with some good stuff. I mean, that five-panel facade that we used at Bray uh, at Expo this summer, mm -hmm. that, that actually does force people to come around the side. Yeah. You know, I love that thing. I know that, you know, a while back there was like, oh, facades are out of fashion, but no, they're back. It's, it's a safety they're thing. They're back. Yeah. yeah. And and the event table, that's perfect. It's it's built inside, so they have to go around to talk. It's you. been my experience. They usually come yeah. to the side of it or come around the yeah. back. It, yeah. I can't recall anybody leaning over the front of it. There's mm -hmm. really no room to do that with the computer there and such. They'll, they'd rather come around. So. Mm -hmm. so uh can anybody else think of anything um you know uh, relating to someone being a danger to themselves or to others that they would like to add go ahead there eric so a couple ideas there um and you know one beautiful thing about this is that sometimes we all come up with different ideas sometimes we're all on the mm -hmm. same wavelength and it's amazing how we are but for me, I don't want people coming around the side because I have wires wrong and I don't mm -hmm. want them coming around the back because my power cord is usually coming from the back. So mm -hmm. I really want them to stay in front of me, but far enough away that they're not going to danger my equipment. So mm -hmm. with that being said, we had a situation a couple of weeks ago where, you know, everything is always taped down. We're real meticulous about that myself. Mm -hmm. The guys are. But this guy, it's late at night. They had bought the eight hour package. It's seven and a half hours into the reception. My guy, Scott, is DJing. A guy comes around the corner. He hooks his foot on a light tripod. The tripod starts to fall over. Scott went to grab it, and he pulled something in his arm. He pulled some tendon or something. He has to have an MRI on his arm wow. because it's hurt for five or six weeks now. So, you know, that I, I like the people to stay in front of me. I want them staying in front. And I usually have a mm -hmm. flashlight, and I'll just shine it on the ground and say, you know, please don't come back here. Too many wires. Um, you know, and I'll just go like this, mm -hmm. like say it louder to me. And that, that's kind of my experiences. I, mm -hmm. I want them in front of me, but I don't want them too mm -hmm. close to me. <laughs> you know, right. I, now that I think about it, I think I wave them around. Like yeah. they'll come up if and they'll look clear, at me like, yeah. what do I do? And I'll come on. And I do try to run all my wires to the wall on one side and I don't use that okay. side. Oh, so that's a great idea. Yeah. So I, you have the I'll, left side to have them come over. The yeah. right side is cables. Yeah. Yeah. I Tell Scott, I have a lawyer side. too. By the way, Eric, tell Scott I have a lawyer for him. We're on it. So <laughs> I, oh, I yeah, expect like, I you you'll be selling pencils pretty soon down at like Spock. <laughs> so I'm just saying. But Scott's like, I need a roadie now. I'm like, oh great, no, <laughs> because he, needs, he can't lift. Can't he lift needs him. Izzy Itzkowitz from Dewey Cheatham and Howe. Poor guy. <laughs> I, a really quick funny story. I met with a client about eight years ago at their apartment. Both the both fiancés and we're talking and he said you don't remember me do you and i'm like um no i'm really sorry um where would i remember you from he's like i was a groomsman in a wedding about three years ago i was a drunk shithead like, okay <laughs> he goes there was a problem at the end of the night i'm like Three years ago, I had one wedding that was a real problem child that like, I want nothing to ever do with again. He goes, was it at the sunset room? I'm like, 
oh, yes. He goes, that was the one. I said, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Um, I don't want to upset you guys, but I, I'm not the right DJ for you. And I start closing my case and he goes, let me just explain real quick for you guys. The groom's brother got in a fist fight at the end of the night with the bride's uncle and the groom, the bride's dad, the uncle and the brother were all handcuffed and arrested wow. and let out of the room. And again, I will stress that this was back. This was a cover job at a hundred dollars an hour. And that's the kind of clients that were showing up. And I said, yeah, I'm, I'm not comfortable with this guys. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm the wrong guy for you. And he goes, no, 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 hold on. And he reaches into his back pocket. And I'm like, oh, my God, is he going to pull a gun or something? Like, what is this? <laughs> and he pulls out his wallet and he opens it up and it's a police badge. And I look at it and I'm like, huh, you're a cop? He goes, yeah. He goes, that's why when that whole thing went off, I took off because I'd been drinking. And I was a rookie at the time on probation. And mm -hmm. if I got involved, that would have been my career. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh. He goes, my wedding's going to be all cops. So I reach into my wallet and I pull out my SDA ID. I'm like, oh, here you go. Oh, okay. So I ended up doing his wedding and it was all cops. Yeah. Which mm -hmm. if you've ever done a cop or a firefighter wedding, they can both yeah. be a little hefty on the cocktails as well. But right. they only go so far. But it was funny because it was the one wedding in my history and career where I just shook my head like, did this just happen? Are they beating the shit out of each other? And, you know, you're the DJ, so you have the mic. And I'm like, hey, guys, stop. Break it up. Break it up. And then after that, I'm just like, nah, that's all I'm going to say. And I started just putting everything away and leaving. And the police right. showed up. I was unloading. I was loading out of the room when the cops yeah. got there. They're like, do you see anything? I'm like, I'm just the DJ. Yeah. <laughs> this eight. is a I'm good topic for player. another show, Howie. This yeah. Is, I'm, now, I'm sure we've got. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let Brian close this out with some words of wisdom that have been said before that if something does happen there, Brian, if we're not what? Well, if we're not, if we're not drinking. Right. Well, that, yes, that's, that's a really good point to make. And I know most everyone in this room wouldn't go have a cocktail at an event. Never. No, and, and never. I, I not don't a wedding. Do I, I, I don't do it because I have a moral problem with it. I don't do it because I can't perform with alcohol in my system. The reason I don't, well, I don't drink anyway, but I used to. But the reason I don't drink at events, or I wasn't drinking at events, and I learned this a long time in the, in the club business, the uh, gentleman who ran the club kind of gave me the explanation on this. He was nice enough to do that for a young guy who had questions. Why can't I have a beer while I'm playing? He's like, look, if there's an altercation between you and a customer and the cops show up, Yep. If you've both been drinking, they're hauling you both away. Yeah. If there you go. The customer has been drinking and you haven't. The customer gets hauled away, and the police look at you and say, "Hey, apologize. Have a good night." And yeah. you continue doing what you're doing. I've presented yeah. this several times. I've mentioned it several times, and I get yeah arguing it. Why would the police show up at a club if there's a problem? Yeah. Where do you guys play? Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> I, I play in like major. I played in like major cities downtown. Yeah. This is not. Yeah, yeah there, not there's the police presence everywhere. <laughs> it just works that way. I suppose if you live in Bug Tussle at your bar, it may not happen, but it happens in the city. <laughs> I gotta go yeah, to this so Bug Tussle at some point. I think there's a burgeoning scene. A whole bunch of bug DJs tussle. are apparently from Bug Tussle because the uh, yeah they talk like they're from Bug Tussle, but no Bug Tussle. It, it, it's just it it just kind of puts you in the clear. No matter yes. what the situation is, if you mm -hmm. have, That's a, a, if you're straight, you know, you're not intoxicated, they're going to blame the guy who's intoxicated and you're yeah. going to be fine. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because he's drunk well, in public too. Yeah. Thank you for taking us out, Brian. And we hope you enjoyed this. If you have any comments, leave them in the comment section below. And if you have ideas for a topic you would like us to cover, we're open to suggestions. And, and I apologize that, to everybody from Bug Tussle. I'm sorry. I don't hate you. <laughs> yeah. We, we don't we, mean we to just don't understand each other all the time. That's all. Yeah. Right <laughs> next to Petticoat <laughs> Junction, Eric. <laughs> and Mayberry is in there. Yeah. It's on the <laughs> same train line. In Peabody. Near Hooterville. 
<laughs> Good night, everyone. <laughs>